All right, so a new version of Pro Tools is out and I'm excited to get testing on it. I wanna see what all the new features are, just like many of you, I'm sure. But maybe you're the type of person where a new version like that comes out and you think there is no way I'm installing this on my system. There could be a bunch of bugs that break things. Maybe there's compatibility issues. I'm in the middle of a project and I cannot afford for anything to go wrong right now. Well, I honestly don't blame you, but what if I told you there's a very easy solution for this? So stick around and I'm gonna show you how to get around this problem. What's up everybody? My name is Matt Yoakum and welcome to my sound. Okay, so like I said, I totally genuinely understand the concern with installing the latest and greatest of anything because especially if you're in the middle of projects, you can't afford a bunch of downtime. The last thing you need is something breaking and now you're scrambling to try to put your system back together when everything was working just fine with an older version. Well, what you may or may not have known is that there is actually a way to make sure that even if something is broken in the new version of Pro Tools that you weren't expecting, that it's very easy to get back to the old version without having to find the old installers to reinstall and to go through that whole rigmarole. And that is because Pro Tools can actually be co-installed, meaning you can have multiple versions of Pro Tools living on your system that all act totally independently from one another. So even if there's a bug in one version, all you have to do is quit Pro Tools, open up the other version, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna show you how to do this it's very simple and I think it's gonna make testing new features much more enjoyable with a lot less paranoia and not being worried about unnecessary downtime. Okay, so here we go. All you have to do is open up Finder, open up your applications folder. I'm gonna search for Pro Tools and here we are. So this is version 25.6.1 of Pro Tools. So this was the latest and greatest version that existed. And now the brand new 2025.10 is out. So obviously it's the year 2025, October, and it's the first version to come out. So it's just a .0 release. This 25.6.1 was June and it was a 0.1 because it was an update to address bugs, to address things that may have broken in 25.6 or to at least provide enhancements. So how do we go about installing this and making sure that this Pro Tools remains on our system? It's so much simpler than you may have thought. All you have to do is click on Pro Tools, hit the enter key. Now I'm going to type 25.6.1, which is the version of Pro Tools, hit okay. It's gonna ask me if I wanna rename this app. I'm gonna hit yes. I'm gonna type in my admin password and that's it. That's all we have to do to ensure that the new version of Pro Tools that we install doesn't overwrite the old one. Pretty simple, right? So I'm actually gonna show you how this works just to make it super clear. So this is the new version here. I'm gonna double click this and we're gonna go through the installation process. Now, I'm gonna speed this up so that you don't have to watch it in real time because it takes a minute to install Pro Tools, so. <laughs> Okay, our installation has been successful. Let's see what it looks like. I'll close this. You'll now notice I have Pro Tools and Pro Tools 25.6.1. All I'm gonna do now is rename this Pro Tools 25.10, put in my password, and now I've got both versions of Pro Tools installed. They're their own separate apps. They share preferences. That's not really the sort of thing that breaks compatibility or causes new bugs. The preference files live there even when you install new versions of Pro Tools. The point being, I can open up 25.10 and if I encounter any sort of issue that starts to hamper my ability to work and I know that 25.6.1 was working just fine, I can simply quit Pro Tools, open up 25.6.1 and I'm off to the races again. No need to go back to old installers no need to worry that the brand new version of Pro Tools is going to cause you anything to stop you in your tracks. Now I'm gonna show you one other tip that's involved with this. This is my mix template that I use in order to mix these videos. So what you can do here is if you right click, you can do open with, and it's gonna give you options. Now what's nice is that it will normally make it so that the newest version becomes your default but I can manually choose to open it in this previous version. 
So the thing is that if I double click this on the finder, it is going to open it with the default program, which in this case is 25.10. Now, something to be aware of. Let's say you've got 25.10 open on your system. But if you try to click here at 25.6.1, what's going to happen is there's going to be another Pro Tools icon in your dock that's going to come up and it's going to bounce showing an error. And then it's going to just close itself and go away. And that's because Pro Tools is going to recognize that there's another app basically sharing all the same functions that's already open. And so it's not going to work and nothing's going to open. Same is true vice versa. So if I have 25.6.1 and I come in here and I double click, it's going to try to open on 25.10. And because 25.6.1 is open, it's not going to want to work. So the best practice is to either quit the version of Pro Tools that you don't want running and then just open up the new session. Or if you already have Pro Tools running and it's not the default version, just make sure that you right click and go open with and select the version that you want. And what's nice about this, and I've got this hidden in a folder, is I actually have another version of Pro Tools. I have all the way back to 24.10.3. So you can have three, four, five versions of Pro Tools. If you're really wanting to make sure that you keep older versions of Pro Tools just in case you wanna go back to them for some reason, you're free to do so. So I hope this super simple trick helps you. I hope it allows you to go forward and test brand new versions of Pro Tools with Abandon with no worries because you'll always be able to get back to your previous versions. So I hope you found this useful. Tell your friends. It's kind of crazy how many people don't actually know about this trick. Do me a big favor. If you learned something from this video, hit the like button down below. Please subscribe to the channel. And thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.